Hello. How are y'all? All right. This is from the uh, Colorado Angel family. Dear praying friends and supporters, excitement, overwhelming peace, great joy fill our hearts and minds as we write about the purpose, work, and precious burden God's continue to grow in this ministry of church planning in Colorado. It is always a joy to share the gospel, but the street ministry has a special place in our heart. What stirred us the most was when Titus jumped right in motion people to roll down their windows and slip tracks in the opening, which that's pretty cool. He was motioning people to roll down their windows so he could give a track to them. Someone, I asked him, where did you learn to sow boldness? He replied, in Colorado. So <laughs> that's where he learned his boldness to be out to pass out tracks. We are still talking with Keith and answering his questions as they arise. He has not followed through with a visit to church. So help us pray for convicting and convincing power. JR has really opened up and talks to us every time we see him. He recently gave fist bump and called us friend. The last time we spoke, he was asked if he had given thought to the gospel track received the first time he met. He replied, I think about it every day. We are gaining promise of support almost every week as the miles pile up and the nights seem long. Pray for strength to continue this leg of journey so we can once again preach the gospel to those awaiting souls in Colorado. We desire confidence, compassion, courage as travel the roads, present the burden and necessity for the church planning in Colorado, cultivating the Colorado angel family. And I'm going to read the scripture because I actually went ahead of that one. I was supposed to do that after I prayed. All right, James 4.13. Go now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue their year and buy, sell, and gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Boy, do I know that. I just talked to somebody that I went to school with that I graduated with, and their kids are... 18 and 20 something. And I was like, good night. I was like, y'all has already moved out. I'm just good. Mine started. <laughs> so I know what it is with your life as a vapor. It does fly by fast. So I'm going to pray and then I'll just pass it to Jamie. Our Father in heaven, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your power, your protection. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for anybody in here who's lost that does not know you, will come to know you as the Lord and personal Savior. I pray for the ones in the back, Lord, as far as back there. If they're lost, I pray for their salvation. Anybody listening, the same thing, Lord. I pray for them to come to a saving knowledge before it's too late. But I pray in Jesus' name, help us to strive for the magistrate as it comes closer to your approaching so that we can be more of a beacon to those who are lost as well as an encouragement to the people. I ask all these things in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sean. Good evening and good to see each one in the house of the Lord tonight. Does anybody have a prayer request the preacher didn't get? Okay, then. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I can't write this pen. Or, this pen is big. Yes, Miss Angeline. Uh, Which one? Okay, Junior, okay. Okay. Miss E. T. Yes, Janice. Mm, I'll put him down. I'm sure he's on the other list. But I...
Anybody else? Yes, me. Anybody else? All right, if not, then let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity we had to be in your house tonight and study your word. Father, we thank you for each one that's come out tonight, Father. We pray tonight as the pastor breaks a message to us tonight, Father, that it'll be a message we need to hear to help us to walk closer with you and change lives in our community. Now, Father, we pray you uh, help us as we pray tonight, Father, that you, you'll be with the request made here tonight and you grant each one according to your will. We pray you'll be with uh, Hannah Posey, also be with Teresa Horvitz's unspoken request and Owen Horvitz's doctor visit on Tuesday. Be with the family of Jackie Sawyers. Be with Gary Price and his needs, Junior Aaron. Uh, be with Randy Jones, who's recovering from surgery. Uh, be with Bill Snow, his procedure tomorrow. And be with Carlos Wells, who's failed. We just pray, Father, you'll touch each of these individuals, have your will and way in their lives, Father. Watch over, take them, and keep them safe, Father. Now, Father, now we pray you be with our pastors. He brings a message to us again, Father. We just ask you to touch him. Uh, from on high, Father, giving the words we need to hear that will help us to walk close with you and change lives in our community. Be with our, we thank you for our church attendance and our tithing and giving, Father. We just, we're just glad that these are coming up, Father, and the needs are being met here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We thank you for our deacons and trustees who make decisions, Father, according to what needs to be done around the church, Father. We pray you just lead, guide, and direct them, Father. We pray, Father, for the sale of our property, our new building, and with Blair Construction and the plans and Mike Barakas, the architect. We pray all these things will work together, Father. We'll soon be out on our new land, worshiping you in our new building. We worship you in spirit and truth out there, Father. We thank you for eternal broadcast and that ministry that spreads the gospel around the world, Father. We pray to be used to your honor and your glory. We also thank you for our WTBI broadcast in Greenville, South Carolina. We thank you for the response we're getting down there, Father. We pray. We'll see lives changed and souls saved, Father. We thank you for Believers Bible Institute, the Sunday school, and our teachers, our youth ministry, and Tuesday Bible study. All ministries are here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We pray they'll continue to grow, and we'll see more and more people coming to know you through these ministries. We thank you, Father, for the peace of Israel. We just pray, Father, that you'll keep your hands upon your chosen people, that you'll help them, Father, to find you. Be with our president, our economy, and our nation, Father. We pray everything will will be together, Father. We pray our president will, will look to you and our leaders will look to you for decisions they need to make, Father. And we pray for the conflicts in Ukraine, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria. Pray you bring our soldiers back home soon, Father. Keep them safe while they're there. Be with their families as they're missing their loved ones, Father. We just pray you'll be with them, Father, and comfort them as only you can. We thank you for our visitors, Father. We pray they keep coming back, Father, and worshiping with us here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We thank you for our new converts, Father. We pray you'll help us to train them in the way they need to be trained so they're coming to know more about you, Father. We thank you for hands of glory in that ministry, and we pray you'll be with them in their upcoming uh, <clears throat> performance there of, um, on uh, August the 12th. We just pray, Father, we'll pray for soul saves and lives changed that night, Father. Now, Father, we lift up many needs to you for salvation that night, Father, and pray you you keep them safe, Father, and you'll send someone to talk to them and tell them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before it's too late, Father. Be with Nick Albino, Carl Amos, Wade Ayers and his health, Brandon and parents, Amanda Banks and Ashley Banks, Brian Banks and Daniel Banks. Be with Rachel Bowen and Steve Banks, uh, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy and Jamie Connor, and Crutchfield, Clinton Davis, Terry Deer, who has cancer also. Be with Robert Durr, Lester Dotson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dutton, Tom Hardy, Jesse Horbert, Brandon Gotze, the Horsley family, Jimmy Jones, Henry and Kenny Law, Billy and Mike and Stephen King, Ryan and Tyler Kinder, Buster Lewis, Sean McCall, Chase and Haley Mentor, Darren Moore, Lauren Myers, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Mark and Poston, Mark and Brian Reagan, Caitlin and Victor Sanchez, Mark and Timothy Shirao, uh, Dylan Smith, Sean and Bobby Stout, Cindy Thompson, Kimberlyn Thompson, May Madeline Thompson, Megan Thompson, Melvin Thompson, Dustin Turner, Buddy Travis, Turney Wershing, uh, George Watson, Megan Wilson, David Wood, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Claude Worrell, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young. Again, Father, we pray someone will come and tell these individuals about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late. Now, Father, we have many health needs to lift up to you tonight, Father. We pray you'll 
Uh, watch over each one and keep them safe, Father, as you touch their bodies, restore their health. Be with Skylar Bowen, be with my health needs, be with Earl and Deborah Connor, and Jack Dale, Tony Dalton, Logan Drawn, Linda Durham, Joyce Earp, Roy and Cletus Evans, Faith Ann Hawley, Wayne Hodges, Audrey Hoskins, Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Angeline Merriman, Shelby Martin, Gary McCullum, Toby Moore, Linda Moorefield, Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols, who has asthma, Loretta Nichols, David and Patty Murray, Angie Oaks, Vince and Sarah Piotta, Alan Cheryl Potabinski, Ann Pruitt, Robert and Vicki Reed, Cindy Rutherford, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, Carol Tickle, Mickey Toller, Anita Warwick, Danny Warwick and his knee, Angel Underwood, Evelyn Watlington, Leon and Connie Wiles, Harold Yancey, and Amy Young. Again, Father, reach down, touch these individuals, restore their health, and bring them back to the fold. Be with the rest of the needs in our prayer list tonight, for we ask these things in your name. Lord, as we continue on with our prayer list, we pray for those with diabetes. Pray for Amanda, Ron Allen, Sherry Bry, Logan Camino, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Sage Oaks, Rod Rains, Lee Rains, Danny Warwick, and Wendy Yancey. And pray for those in the nursing home. We just ask that you uh, be with them in a mighty way, Lord. Just be with Kat, uh, Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin, Francis Roberson, Joyce Thomas, <coughs> and Diana Wagner, Michelle Johnson, and Kyle Baldwin. And we pray for uh, those with Alzheimer's and dementia. Be with Mary Malone and Roy Evans. Be with those who have COPD, Lord. Uh, Mike Mills, Jim Phillips, Sheila Richardson, and Amanda Watson. Uh, we pray for these people to get back in church, Lord. Just ask that you bring them back to the fold. Be with the Clary family, Buddy and Carol Garvin, uh, Cassie and family, Kirsten McBride, DJ and Chelsea, Be with Gary Graham, uh, Jonathan Reed, Glenn Tickle, Mike Tickle and family. Uh, we pray for our friends, family, and neighbors, Lord. Just ask that you uh, uh, bless them, Lord. Just uh, Be with Anna, Chris Atkins, Donald Aaron, Mary Abbott, Junior Aaron, Austin Begley, Vinnie Begley, Jake Bland, Carol Bonnet, David Burton, Phyllis Clary, Anna Clary, Raymond Clary, Jean Connor, Amy Ferguson, Gracie Ganell, Mary Heiss, Damian Lewis, Chelsea Martin, Danny Martin, Keith Moorefield, uh, Donald Owen, Dale Ray, Florence Richardson, Vicki Schelling, Glenn and Nancy Slayton, Bob Tamson, Alan and Shirley Taylor, the Vickers family, Jim Wyatt, and Patrick Wyatt. We pray for those with cancer, Lord. Just ask that you touch their body in a mighty way, Lord. Just remove the cancer. Uh, we know that you are the great physician, Lord. Um, be with Jonah Atkins, Portia Atkins, Kathy Allen, Bobby Alley, David Bale, Tom Barley, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Vanessa Burchett, Pam Carter, Ronnie Carter, Tim Kaiser, uh, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Dales, Melanie Dickerson, Pat Dalton, Thomas Dix, Kellen Dunn, Jeremy Ferguson, Mary Follis, Tammy Fries, Amanda Galder, April Galden, uh, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Kevin Hicks, Anika Hodnett, Kevin Hopkins, Carlton Hoskins, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Emerson Kitts, uh, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, uh, Hayden Neal, Tony Phillips, Mary Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Danny Ray, Tasha Ritchie, Donald Ricketts, David Roberson, Patricia Robinson, Naomi Robinson, Linda Wyatt, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Frank Wilkerson, Dave Wilkinson, Lisa Wilson, and Jill Wood. Uh, Lord, we pray for our college students, Lord. Just know that they need you, Lord. Just know that just uh, allow them to lean not onto their understanding, but unto you, Lord. I'll uh, be with Taylor, Taylor Otterman, uh, Bradley Gautzi, Trinity Langley, Elizabeth Lewis, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Amber Nosia, Caleb Pulley, Mary Sue Woodson, and Tori Underwood. Lord, we just ask that you be with the rest of this prayer list, Lord. Just answer all these prayers according to your precious and holy will. It's in your name I pray. We'd like to remember tonight uh, the special request, and we pray that our Lord and Savior knows all about these requests, and we pray that he would meet the needs of each one tonight. And we have Donna Amos. 
Jenny Barrett, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, David Burton, Tanya Curry, Manny Graham, Mallory Hamlet, Sean and Teresa Horbett, Janice Hodges, Katie and Van Hunt, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Hussey, myself, David Jones, Eston Lewis, Shelby Martin, Christy McBride, Mike and Diane Mills, also Angie Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotta, Bonnie Rains, Amy Saunders, Kevin and Kim Snow, Eileen Tickle, Hannah Vipperman, Layden Walker, also Matthew and Chi Williams, Vicki Reed, Danielle Roach, and Lois Wick. Tonight also we'd like to remember our pastors and evangelists, and we're just thankful that we're able to help them as we supply help with them, Lord, through uh, our, our tithes that we give, Lord, and we just pray that we'll continue to be able to help these pastors and evangelists and that the word will keep going forth and that souls will be saved, Lord. And we thank you that we're able to be a part of that, and we love you and thank you for all that you do for us. So we'd like to remember now our pastors and evangelists. That's Scott A.G., Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, J.B. Baldridge, Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, also Carlton Duck, Larry Fitzgerald, Jerry Flanagan, Jerry Foley, also Donnie Glass and Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, Larry and Donna Johnson of Lynchburg, John Kaiser, Derek Kaiser, Tim Kaiser, Terry St. John, also Steve Lamb, Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dr. Danny Reichard, Dan Schelling, Tim Schelling, Davey Shelton, Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, also Philip Stout, the Tobert family, Brian Warren, and Jeff Woods. And we ask all of these to be helped, Lord, in Jesus, my Lord and Savior's holy and precious name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we continue to pray, Lord. Pray in Jesus' name to be with all the missionaries that are across the globe, Lord, to just be with them, protect them, just continue to use them in a mighty way. Teddy Angel, Tamar Aldridge, Virginia Assembly, of Independent Baptist, Randy Ashcraft, Beacon Baptist Missions, Commander Al, Emmanuel Bala, Evangelist Earl Clarkson, John Coleman, Mary Sue Cook, Stan, Stan Cullen, Keith Cullors, Chris Giacomo, Fortina Dratez, Faye Dykes, Daniel Farrow, David Gibbs, Virgil Galen, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, Lois Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nestor LeBlue, and Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Mahano, Sturm Rescue Missions, Nathan Miller, National Pastors of Cuba, National Pastors of Pakistan, Dr. John Mitchell, Alan Nye, Mike Peckoff, Michael Peckoff, David Rossin, Ken Ream, Evangelist Jeff Worley, Demetrio Rodrigo, Roloff Ministries, Jason Serval, Tabernacle Children's Home, Hal Williams, David Weiss, Lord, and I pray in Jesus' name for all our upcoming events. I pray for souls to be saved and lives to be changed. Pray for Tim Kaiser, just be with him. Lester, Lord, and Smokey Wilson, and a revival coming up in October, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that all this will help to further your kingdom. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's all get a hymn book down there. Turn to page number 208, and we'll sing all the verses of Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Let's all stand.
seated. All right, as the ushers come to take our offering tonight, don't forget everything that comes in on Wednesday night goes to our Wednesday night fund. That takes care of our singings, our revivals, our, our speak, preachers who come to speak for us, all those good things. So you can't outgive God, say amen. amen. And so let's be faith, faithful in our giving. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for the ability and the opportunity to give to your work. Lord, how it... Uh, uh, enables us, Lord, to do more, to reach out further. First of all, to uh, first of all to honor you. Secondly, to encourage the brethren, but then thirdly, to evangelize the lost. God, help us be so conscious in these days that we're living in. Help us to reach out to every lost and dying person we possibly can, and help us be faithful in serving you. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the giver. Use it to build in your kingdom and bless our time together tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. By the blood of the crucified one, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, y'all are awake. You don't look too awake, but I know you are because I can hear you. Say amen. amen. All right. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Last time we concluded uh, exercising grace. We had already talked about examined grace. Now tonight we're going to talk about established grace. Established grace. Grace is something that you uh, have to have. There's saving grace. That's the moment you get saved. Then there's sustaining grace. That gets you through your problems. Say amen. amen. And now there's serving grace. To serve the Lord. To live for Him. These people who say, oh, I've got too many problems to serve God. You don't know what grace is. Grace makes you able to serve God. Grace makes you able to live above all the fray of life, all the heartaches and the sorrows. Grace is being happy when the circumstances of your life 
make you sad. There's going to be sad times in your life because there's an enemy. Grace is being faithful to God when the circumstances of your life should make you avoid doing God's will and work, but you don't because God's grace is on you. You go ahead anyway. Grace is being faithful to God when the circumstances of life seem to look like God's forgotten all about you. And the devil's going to make sure you think God's gotten, uh, gotten Alzheimer's. No, God does not have Alzheimer's. Uh, he does not have dementia. He is not avoiding you. Lots of times those are smoke screens that Satan sends up. It, it, the, big, the biggest problem I see in life is when someone loses a loved one to death. The first thing the devil wants you to do is blame God. You can't blame God for death. He didn't bring death into this world. Satan did. So if you want to get mad at somebody because somebody died, take it out on the devil. Don't take it out on God. God's did everything he can to make sure you live for eternity and live eternally. So it makes no sense to these people say, I'm not going back to church. I'm mad at God because he took my grandma or he took my grandpa. That's just insane because the devil's the one who brings death. Now, Grace is forgiving someone when the circumstances of life ought to make you hate them. Now, Jesus lived that one perfectly. Read your New Testament. He had reason to hate a lot of people, but he never hated anyone. Grace is helping someone when the circumstances of life, uh, they, try, uh, they really don't deserve your help. Now, today, you've got to be smart about how you help people. Let me say that again. You've got to be smart about how you help people. You know, people... Uh, you can't give people money today because there are a lot of addicts out there who will take your money and then go buy more drugs. You're not helping them. You're hurting them. I had a man in church the other day. He says, I see all these people, and he says, I want to do something for them, but I know I can't do what they want me to do. So they put together a little bag with a track and some other little things in there, and they give it to them uh, when, they, when they see them out on the side of the road and so forth. So he's doing something to help them. He just may not be doing what they want, but he's doing what he can. Say amen. And so, you, you, and I've heard people say, well, these people don't deserve help. Oh, you, you, you got your attitude wrong. You got your attitude wrong. Uh, they may be, there may be some shysters, and there may be a lot of shysters out there. And they may be a shyster, but that's your opportunity to be a witness to them. Even though they're doing wrong, it doesn't give you the right to do wrong. It gives you the right and opportunity to do right. You just got to be smart in how you help folks. Say Amen. Now, grace is loving someone unconditionally who the circumstances of life has done you wrong and hated you. And so those are some ideas and some examples of what grace can help make you do. But to have the grace of God takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort. Not long ago, Newsweek magazine reported on a new wave of what they call mountain men. And it ain't what you think. These are men who climb rocks without ropes. That's dangerous. Now, number one, you ain't going to never see Walter Yancey climbing no rocks without a rope. Well, let me restate that. You ain't going to never see Walter Yancey climbing a mountain, period. Rope or no rope. I'm, 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 I'm not that astute. I don't, I don't enjoy that kind of thing. But these men, it's estimated... There's some 60,000 serious mountain climbers in America. And uh, there's an elite group of these 60,000 they call hard men. These are the ones that use no ropes, no nothing. And so they scale these rock faces and, and they climb all the way top. In many cases, climbing is uh, a, a part of their commitment to life. And folks, if they can be committed to climbing a rock, we ought to be able to be committed to stand on one. Amen. Now, just think about this thing. We just got to stand on the rock. I can do that. I can stand on a rock. I ain't going to climb one, but I can stand on one. Now, these mountain men, uh, they take these serious risks in their life for the thrill of it. When we come to the point that standing on the rock is a thrill, we'll get somewhere. Right now, people make all kinds of excuses not to stand on the rock, not to be faithful, not to be committed, not to be determined. One of these men's wives was being interviewed in this magazine, and she said, I don't believe him sometimes. Sometimes I'll catch him at home hanging from the ceiling by his fingers. 
She said he's trying to get his strength and his fingers and his hands built up so when he goes to climb these rocks, he's got strong fingers and strong hands. She says he is completely dedicated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to making himself an expert rock climber. And I just sit there and read, and I thought, man alive. When, do, when are Christians going to get to the point that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they're so committed to standing on the rock and then living in the grace of God instead of living outside the grace of God? There's nothing good outside the grace of God. There's nothing eternal outside the grace of God. But inside the grace of God, there's some awesome opportunities to do some eternal things and make some differences in some people's lives. We need some hard men and hard women and hard young people who are not afraid to exercise the grace of God. In other words, this list of things I read to you at the beginning, you're not afraid to live that way because you know who the number one person you're going to have to fight to live that way is? You. You. You're the number one. I'm the number one. We are our own worst enemies to the grace of God. We want the grace of God to be upon us. We're going to have to be these uh, astute men and women who uh, no matter what the sacrifice, no matter what the cost, no matter the persecution, no matter the stress or strain, we need so many women who love God enough to sell out to him, to live his way for his sake and for the sake of others. Joy, Jesus first, others second, yourself last. But you've got to be committed to that thing. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight, and I'm not talking about Diane's choir. I'm talking about this choir. <laughs> y'all are here tonight because y'all are dedicated. Y'all are the dedicated crowd, the Wednesday night crowd, who will show up and be here because you love the Lord and you love his word, and you want to absorb the word of God so you can have the grace of God so you can stand on that solid rock. Now, 1 Peter 5.10 is very, very, very pointed. But the God of, what kind of grace? All grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory. Called us to it don't mean you're going to be in his eternal glory. That's up to you. It's available to you. You can live in his glory now and bask in his glory later. But that's up to you. That's, that's totally up to you whether or not you learn how to enjoy the glory of God and live in the glory of God. After that you have, uh oh, here's that word you don't like, suffered a while. Suffered a while. Make you perfect. That doesn't mean perfect in the sense of don't do anything wrong. It means complete. Arm in arm with God. Establish. That means you're on the rock. Strengthen, that means you're not going to move off of that rock. You've got the ability to stay there and settle you. Nothing's going to shake you. When I was young, it didn't take much to make me go off. I had a Brenda Yancey tube that just wouldn't quit. My mama, she'd blow up in the New York Minute, and sometimes she'd light the fuse. Don't die out there on me. She, had a, had, she, she could blow... And I, I lived with her all my life. She trained me well. And one day, Brother Earl sat me down and said, Brother Walter, we got to talk. I said, okay. I'll listen. You talk. He said, you can't let things upset you or the devil's going to stay on your doorstep all the time to keep your nerves tore up all the time. He says, not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to respect you. Not everybody's going to help you. Not everybody's going to love you. Nobody, not everybody's going to help you. He said, that's just a fact of life. And you can't let that fact that people disappoint you or people hurt your feelings or people make you M-A-D, mad. You can't allow that to control you because if you do, you're never going to accomplish nothing for God because you're going to be a bundle of nerves all the time. He says, you've got to learn to not let things get to you. I said, well, how in the world do you do that? And you know what he looked at me and said, grace. You've got to learn to live in the grace of God. In other words, you've got to learn knowing God knows more than you know. God's smarter than you are. God's never left you, not, never going to. 
He's going to be with you. He's going to be there. He's, if something bad happens, he knows about it. didn't catch him off surprise. It may catch me and you off surprise, but it don't catch him off surprise. He knows it's coming. He's there. He is our ace in the hole. Say amen. And we've got to believe that. And we've got to trust him to settle us and to keep us calm. Now look at Hebrews 13, 9. Be not carried away by divers and strange doctrines. Now that was attitude we talked about. Now let's talk about grace for just a minute when it concerns the Word of God. How do you obtain the grace of God? By knowing the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Plain and simple. Now, if you're going to go out here and live by strange doctrines, you're going to mess up. You cannot, and this, this is the worst age in the world for this, because every preacher's got a website. Every preacher's got a YouTube channel. Every preacher has got internet access for you to get on. And there is no filter for you to know if you've got a hold to a uh, religious idiot or somebody who really knows the Word of God. It's dangerous out there on that internet, I'm going to tell you. It's dangerous who you listen to. It used to be just the television. Now it's the TV, the internet, the telephone. It's, it's out there. I had this one young lady who just gotten saved, and she was calling me every other day. Do you know this person? Do you know that person? Do you know the other person? No, I don't know any of them. Well, should I listen to him? I said, no. No. I said, because you don't know who they are. And, and you can't trust people today. I'm sorry. The devil's on every corner. And I mean, just the well-known preachers is bad enough. Okay? Most well-known preachers are what I call 80 percenters. They get about 80% of it right. But it's that 20% that'll choke you to death and kill you spiritually that you better watch out for. I mean, you, you've got to be careful what these people teach and how they One of the most popular preachers in the country is a Calvinist. He's got everybody under his umbrella and everybody's buying his books and everybody's listening to everything he said and he's teaching them wrong when it comes to evangelism. Teaching them dead wrong. It's not the keepers of the aquarium. It's the uh, fishers of men. When I was a kid, soul winning was taught all the time. It was preached all the time. You don't hear it anymore. I dare you to look at some websites and see how many messages they got on soul winning. Zero. Because, see, the devil knows he can get you just this far off. He can control you. He can stop. Because there's only one thing God wants us to do, and that's win the loss. Is that not true? Is that not true? That's the number one goal of the, of the church. It's become the zero goal of the church. If you ask the average Baptist how to lead somebody to Jesus, they go to shake and break out and sweat. I, I, I don't know how to do that. That's the first thing you should be taught is how to lead somebody to Christ. And most Christians don't even know how to lead somebody to Christ. I, I'm, a, I'm guilty when I went to college. I've been in Christian school. I've been in church since I was in uh, second grade. I've done been through everything you could imagine. I've been memorized, I don't know how much scripture in the Bible by the time I got in college. And Dr. Wilmington said, I want somebody to tell, stand up and tell us what the gospel is. There was 125 students in that room. Do you know how many jumped up to give him a definition of the gospel? Not the first one of us. He said, I don't believe this. He said, the gospel's simple. It's three things. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said he died to pay a debt you do owe. He was buried to give you forgiveness you definitely need. And he rose again to give you eternal life, something you definitely want. I never forgot the gospel from that day. I was taught the gospel. That's the message we ought to be getting out to everybody everywhere. I said, preacher, that's simple. God didn't try to make it out hard. It's religion that tries to make it hard. But Jesus makes the gospel easy. And so the doctrine, what you know and what you believe is so important. Uh, sound like time for a commercial, don't it, Ken? 
Bible Institute starts in three weeks. And uh, we've got several new students, and I thank God for it. But there's room for more. Why? Because if you don't know what you believe, you can be led astray very, very easily. We're not going to teach you everything in the Bible. We're not going to make you memorize everything in the Bible. We're just going to teach you where it's at in the Bible so when you need it, you know where to go find it. That's what you've got to teach. You've got to teach what's in the Word of God, how the Bible's set up, from Genesis to Revelation, bring it together with theology so that when something pops up and you need help, you know where to go get it. Say amen. The average Christian today, they don't know how to do that. They've not been discipled. You read the New Testament. The first thing you do after you win somebody to Jesus is disciple them. You disciple them. We have the ABCs of spiritual growth. Somebody gets saved, the first thing I give them is a Bible, the second thing I give them is ABCs of spiritual growth. When they get that one done, I'll give them, I give them A through D, then I'll give them the next book, the next book, so they're all the way through. By the time they get through those ABCs of spiritual growth, if they'll do it, they'll be strong enough they can continue to grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Discipleship. That's why we have Sunday school. That's why we have Bible study on Tuesdays. That's why we're here tonight, to study the Word of God. So that we won't be carried away by divers. That means different and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established. <laughs> there it is, with what? With grace. If you know the doctrines of the Word of God, they will make you wise unto what you need to know to stand upon, to give you that solid rock when the winds blow, when the rocks are thrown, when the heat bears down on you, you know what to do. Whole little charm. When it was 90 some degrees those two or three days, Wendy would let her out the door. And I'd say, don't move, she'll be back quick. With all that black fur on her, it don't take long, she'd go to roasting. And you'd hear at the door, Wendy would have to let her in. She'd go get in front of the fan, sit there and cool off. She knew where to go when she got too hot. She didn't go to Brandon's house because Brandon won't tell He's at work. She ain't getting in over there. But she knew we were at home. She knew to come to us. We'd let her in, and we'd let her cool off, and she'd have plenty of water to drink and plenty of bacon to eat. <laughs> she knew where the sustenance was. Folks, we got to know that this is where our sustenance is. If you want grace, you got to believe these things. You got to obey these things. You got to trust these things. You got to uh, be established in grace, not with meats which have no profit, not profited them uh, that have uh, been occupied therein. All that's meaning is you can't be satisfied by the things of the world. The wor worldly things are, I was studying today in, in Hosea chapter 13. I saw something I never saw before. It was just, it was excellent. And, and, and here's the problem of the world. You see, the world tries to satisfy you with pleasures that are not going to satisfy you. Pleasures are not going to satisfy you. They're only going to give you joy for this much time. Then you've got to go back and do it again. And then it's only going to last a certain time. You've got to go back and do it again. And you keep doing it again. That brings in addiction. You'd be addicted more to alcohol and drugs. i got news for you. You'd be addicted to eating. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Everybody got a sin which does see is to beset them. You'd get addicted to any sin under the sun. But you see, when you don't trust God and you waste your time, there was a phrase, I wish I could think of it off the top of my head, it was talked about, uh, uh, well, just let me look it up to you. If God wants me to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Uh, say, preacher, you don't know where you're at. No, I know where I'm at. Just hang with me. 13. Let me read this to you. It's in verse... <laughs> okay. Here it is. Verse 2, the last part says this. I know Ken don't have it, but y'all just listen to me. Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. I said, blah, 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 blah. what in the world does that mean? Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. 
I said, that don't make sense. I said, but I'm going to find out what it means. So I got to digging. And then it made sense to me. You see, here were these men building idols. Okay? Building idols made out of gold, silver, wood, and stone. Now listen carefully to this. They were going out sacrificing human beings, some, many times babies, to Baal. Okay? And then they'd, they'd take the life of that innocent individual or that innocent baby. Then they'd go kiss that calf, that idol. They'd go kiss that idol. God said, that don't make sense. You're kissing a dead idol and killing a live human being. Are you getting where I'm going here? You're throwing away what's valuable and you're worshiping what's not valuable. Doesn't make sense, does it? But that's what we do every day. When we sell something else out that's, that's not God and we worship something other than God and sell him out for something else, we've kissed the calf and sacrificed that which was worth something. And, and pleasure, if you're living for pleasure, you're never going to be happy. Never. Because it all... The pleasure of sin is but for a what? Season. It's never going to last. It's never going to, it's never going to satisfy you. So, and, and I'll say this and I'll move on. He created the world. But we make things and worship the world. Think about it. Doesn't make sense. Worship the creator. Amen. Worship the creator, not the one. We're taking what he created and we're worshiping that when we ought to be worshiping him. And we waste our time, we waste our talent, we waste our treasure seeking for pleasure and really sometimes just sheer comfort because life is not, it's not fun. And you know that. I'm not telling you that you don't know. You're going to go home tomorrow and get a bill in the mail. You won't expect them to come. That ain't no fun. Doctor's going to tell you something you don't want to hear. That ain't no fun. You're going to get a phone call. Somebody you love has been passed away. I was talking to a lady before church. A childhood friend of hers was, was murdered last week. Life is not fun. It's heartaches and sorrows and burdens. And, and we got to live through this stuff. Am I right? We got to live through this stuff. And we're over here worshiping the dirt that God created instead of worshiping him. Yeah, we make things. Go home and read Hosea chapter 13. You can make some beautiful things. Boy, there's some beautiful, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but there's some beautiful things that have been sculptured. You, they look beautiful. they got jewels on them. They're colorful. They're made out of gold. They're beautiful, but they're just trinkets made out of what God created. Why do we cre worship something and look for soothing in something that's just created when we can worship the creator who could help us? That thing we're worshiping or doing is not going to satisfy us, but he will. He'll give us the grace that we need to get where we need to go. He'll get us over the tide. He'll get us through the hard times and the sad times. That word established, I think I give that to Kim. Did I give that to you? To set up permanently, settled in position, show beyond dispute or proof. Tonight, what I'm trying to encourage you to do as a Christian is prove to God you're going to worship the Creator and not its creation. You're going to stick with Him. You're going to stick by Him, for Him, with Him, and you're going to do it because He's going to help you do it. He's going to help you do it. I'll never forget one time years ago, one of my school teachers, Maxine Gasser, she wanted us to do a little science project and what she wanted me to do, I didn't, I didn't know what she was talking about. She said, just stay after school. I'll help you. I'll, I'm not going to do it for you. And let me tell you something real clear. God's not going to do it for you. He'll help you do it. But you've got to do it for him because he's not here. She said, you come and I'll help you. I'm not going to do it for you, but I'll stand by you. And I'll answer your questions and I'll give you ideas. 
And you know, she did, and, and I did, and I got a good grade. I think I got a B plus on that thing. I was tickled to death. You see, folks, we ought to want a good grade from God. And the only way we're going to get a good grade from God is to be established. The question tonight is, Does can God depend on you? Can he depend on you to be permanently in your position? Or does he have to wonder if you're going to show up or not? Does he wonder if you're going to be faithful or not? Does he wonder if you're going to pray to him or not? Are you going to pray to him or are you going to avoid him? Are you going to skip out and talk to somebody else instead of talking to him? Are you going to listen to Oprah Winfrey or or Joey Joey Behar or some of them crazy people on TV? Are you going to open your Bible and listen to God? Are you established? Now, here's a bigger question. The people around you know if you're established or not. They know. And when they get in trouble and they need help spiritually, if you're established, they're going to come to you because they know you are. If you're not established, they're not. They're going to look for help somewhere else. Can God trust you to be established? Can the people around you trust you to be established? Here's my ball and chain. But I got to have it. Because if you need me, you need to know how to get me. It stays in my pocket or near me. I, I, I took a, my foot was swollen, and I said, I ain't going to be able to get my shoes on. So. About 4 o'clock, I'd been studying the book of Jose all day. I said, when am I going to lay down and see if my foot will go down for an hour, wake me up? I said, we'll leave and we'll go to church. So I lay down for about an hour. That's the worst thing in the world you can do because you're going to get up feeling worse than you did when you laid down. But I was in a rock to rock and hard places. He'd lay down and get my shoe on or sit up and not put my shoe on. So what am I going to do? So I laid down. But anyway, I got up. I'm discombobulated. I got to go in, shave, brush my teeth, comb my hair. And uh, this, that, and the other, I got to hurry up and get ready to go. And I did. I had to get my outline for the service, do this, that, and the other. And I got in the car, and I forgot my ball and chain. And as soon as I, I hollered to Wendy when she's come out the door, forgot my phone, I got it. <laughs> she didn't already pick it up and brought it to me. Thank God for a helpmate. Say amen. Because I got to have that because, hey, that is part of me being found. You can get me. And, and that's the key in our spiritual life is we have got to be established so God can find us, our friends can find us, but that's the only way we're going to do that is through grace. And the only way you can get grace is to trust, believe, and live this book right here. Then God can pour you out grace that is sufficient God wants you to be established in grace as a permanent state in your life every day, every hour. God wants you to establish grace in your life as a position of power against the enemy. Does the devil fear you because you're established? Think about them apples. And I know about apples because they pulled a whole tree load out of my yard today. What about them apples? Now, God wants you to establish grace in your life as a non negotiable territory or state in your Christian life. Nothing is going to get between you and God. Nothing's going to make you run off and kiss a calf. Amen? Nothing's going to make you go off and kiss a calf. You're going to stay with God. You're going to stay with Him. You're not going to flip-flop. You're not going to flim-flam. You're not going to be in and out, up and down. You're going to be established. He wants you to make it clear to him and Satan which side of the fence you're on. He wants you to use grace as a proven, effective uh, element in your Christian life. He wants you to prove with victory after victory the power of God is in your life. And the only way you'll ever have the power of God is to have the grace of God. If there's no grace, there'll never be any power. And God knows the only way you and I can get over the mess we're in is the power of God. Therefore, you've got to have the grace of God. And it takes a Christian with bulldog, hang on, foreverness when it comes to grace to be that kind of Christian. Suffering is the element of the Christian life that cannot be eliminated. 
You cannot eliminate suffering. It's coming in waves sometimes it's coming. And if somebody tells you, listen, we're not Christian scientists. You know, Christian scientists say if you're sick, it's all in your mind. Well, when my nose is stopped up, it's in my nose. <laughs> say amen or oh me. When my foot's swollen, it's in my foot, honey. The pain's in my foot. When my back hurts, the pain's in my back. Now, if, if uh, Mr. Tom Cruise wants to be an idiot beyond his intelligence and think all his pain's in his head, well, if I had a head that big, my probably full of a bunch of junk too. But, you know, we're not Christian scientists. The pain we feel is real. The troubles we have are real. The struggles we have are real. But just as real as our struggles, our persecutions, our problems, our heartache, just as real as they are, so is the grace of God real. And it will get you through the race. It will set the pace, keep your eyes on his face, and you'll arrive at God's grace. Don't make me say that again because I didn't write that down. The grace of God. Arrive there. Embrace the grace, and it'll pull a smile on your face, and it'll get you a victory. I hear Christians say all the time, I just don't ever seem to win. I just don't ever seem to win. And I look at their life, and I say, it's no wonder you never seem to win. You don't go to church. You don't pray. You don't read your Bible. You don't pass out tracts. You're half in church, half out. You don't give God your best, and you wonder why you don't have his grace. If you're off kissing one of them calves, he can't bless you. We ought to be hugging and kissing him. Amen? Not something that he's created. And, and, and folks, we've got to get serious. I'm going to tell you. Uh, Brother Mike Mills and I have talked about this, and he'll say amen to what I'm fixing to say. The biggest neglected fact of the church today is dedication. People today don't know what dedication is. They don't know what determination is. You see, if you're determined, you'll be dedicated. If you're determined that you love God, nothing's going to stop you from loving God. You'll be dedicated to what God wants you to do, and you'll be dutiful. Nobody will have to tell you to do what you need to do. Nobody will have to force you or pat you on the back to get you to serve God. See, here's the thing about the church. It's become a pat on your back society. That doesn't work. Because look, the devil's going to make sure people don't pat you on the back. So the devil... His grace is always available. Always. So if his grace is always available and the devil's always after you, I won't be kissing no calf. I'll be hugging up to Jesus. And I'd stay with him 24 7. And I'd be seeking his face. I'd be seeking his grace. And I'd be seeking him because that's where the victory's at. Earl Clarkson. It's probably the greatest testimony I know of of any human that's always got us. He, he used to make me sick coming to work. He'd come in at temple. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just want to shut up, Earl. I got a headache this morning. I don't feel good this morning. I ain't having a good day. He's glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and all this kind of stuff. But I learned his secret to that. I learned his secret. He didn't pay no attention to the problems. He didn't pay no attention to the pressures. He paid attention to the possibilities. He let the problems and the pressures take care of himself. He'd leave them with God before he'd come to church, then he'd be glorifying God. If God was handling his problems and pressures, he's going to go out and handle God's possibilities. 
We go back and come back. Had two saved today, had three saved today, had three full for doing the church this Sunday. Got two, three going to get baptized. Why? Because he can sit there and moan and groan and feel sorry for himself all day. He said, I'm going to go out and find out what God's got for me. I'm going to walk with the Lord today. I'm going to walk in the light of his love. And God always gives me victory. Always. You want victory? seeking your face. I don't want to kiss calves anymore. I don't want to worship things you've created. I don't want to look for solutions and pleasures and satisfaction in the things of this world. I want to find my satisfaction, my peace, and my hope in worshiping the one who created it all. And worshiping the one who has the answer, the one who's totally 100% uh, powerful, totally uh, in the know, has all the answers omniscient. Oh, God, help us tonight to come to you and pray. God, help me. We've all got problems, pressures. We've all got persecutions. But, Lord, we've got to have